Um, I was uh, actually just in a, a book, a Sakwa publication. Okay. All right. Don't say it because I'm going to, I'm going to have a prize. Okay. And I can't remember it anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if somebody can tell us what it is, say, yep, that's it. And then they'll win the prize. Um, okay. So for a few minutes, so we are live. So, um, you know, I try to be on my best behavior, not use any mommy words, all that good stuff. Um, it, but it takes a few minutes for people to start um, signing on and joining us once we go live. Um, okay, so let me see. Well, we're kind of, with, well, we've got nine people. Okay, so um, we'd like to welcome all of you to um, our Facebook Live at four o'clock on Mondays. We do this every Monday. And today we have a special guest, Katherine Palman, and she's going to tell us kind of what got her interested in in sewing, what got her interested, what she specializes in, all that good stuff. So if you have any questions, just put, um, put it into the comments and we'll make sure she gets it answered. Um, hi, Betsy and Lynn and Joyce. Welcome, girls. Okay, so Catherine, I'm just going to kind of let you take it away and tell us what what made you decide, were you always in this industry? Um, I don't know if you'd say I was always in this industry. I, I love textiles and fabrics. And I started out making Barbie doll clothes when I was a kid. And then I made them for the kids I babysat for. Then I got into fashion design. And I stumbled into quilting when I was living in Stamford, Connecticut. Okay, so you haven't always are you on you're in Arizona, aren't you? Um, I'm actually in Los Angeles. Okay, okay. I knew I saw you some at some point when I was on the road last month. <laughs> Or two months yes. ago. Yes. I, actually, I, I saw you at Road to California. Okay. And you had a display there, didn't you? I did. I did. Yeah. Okay. So so do you want to show us kind of what, what yeah. you're most famous for? I'm going to show you one of the pieces in the... I'm going to have to cover my face because that's the only way I can make sure everybody can see this. This is in my uh, part of my word salad, Fashionistas and Girlfriends. And this is called Fashionista Quilter. And she's about 12 inches by 12 inches. And my quilts tell stories. And instead of drawing, I use the sewing machine um, as my pen and fabric as my paint. And if you look over oops, this corner, you can see LA's native bird, the helicopter. Oh, <laughs> super cute. So is that an actual quilt or is it on a It is board? actually... It is a quilt, and then I put them on mat boards because um, they really can't be handled. The piece handled a lot. The pieces are very small. Some of them are a quarter of an inch, even though they're stitched and fused. Um, I don't want people handling them. And I also think of them as artwork. And, you know, when people are buying art, if they can see it in a picture frame, it's worth more money. Yes, for sure. For sure. Yes. And, and that is Petunia Olive in the background. And I'm hoping that the mail does not arrive or she will make a very loud announcement. Oh, that's okay. These women are, most of them are dog. They love dogs. Well, I can introduce her later if they like. Okay. So okay. what happened was, is that I, I thought um, that quilts had to be hand pieced and hand quilted. So I couldn't figure out how to make a big one. So I made a miniature one. Oh my gosh. That's absolutely beautiful. Look at those points. And, and the quilting is amazing. It's hand pieced, hand quilted. And I, like everything I do, I picked the hardest pattern I could find. And I had a Ginny Buyer book and I picked the star. So the center star is about six inches to give you a sense of the scale. Oh my gosh. And it, did you paper piece it? I didn't know what paper piecing was. I didn't know anything at all about quilting. I was, if it wasn't in the Ruby McKim book, I didn't know about it. Oh my goodness. Um, but fortunately, I met other quilters. I went to a quilt guild meeting and um, met a group of quilters who lived near me who were making quilts for their beds using a rotary cutter and a sewing machine. And I got introduced to Mary Ellen Hopkins and learned strip piecing, and I had a quilt to sleep under. Perfect. Um, but I was always interested in kind of creating, I like creating stories and pictures. And so I took a class in cartooning because I wanted my work to be more original. So this is one of my first original pieces. Adorable. It's called Kitty Quilter. Um, and if you, you know. The I'm, roller skates. Yeah, I'm assuming you guys can see what I can see. 
Um, yes. So if she is yes, missing, just tell me if a piece is cut off. Yeah, she has roller skates on because um, at that time I was into roller skating and she's smuggling her fabric home disguised as fish and um, duck. Oh, how funny. And then I also made a piece uh, quilt back uh -huh. uh, because I'm also the co-author of Back Art on the Flip Side, which was published quite a while ago on piece quilt backs. So, so do the, you piece all of your backs now? Um, actually, I really don't piece most of my backs because they're so heavily quilted that I don't want to add extra seams. Mm -hmm. and also, most of my quilts are really meant to be flat on the wall so people aren't really looking at the backs. Uh, however, if I make a quilt to sleep under, it will have a piece quilt back because I don't believe in putting things into, you know, Ziploc bags. Yeah. Um, I don't do that. I pick everything up, I sew it together, and I piece the back. And I never have enough for the back anyway. So I just start using up what's left over. So that kind of morphed into, you know, a little bit more of a scene. Uh-huh. So I forgot what this is called, but she was in the cows. And she's sewing. And then on the back, I put a little cow on the back just so that there was something. But then I got into the fashionistas, probably I've been playing, I've always played around with female figures and I got into the fashionistas probably about, I don't know, maybe eight, nine, 10 years ago. And I wanted to also work on a smaller scale because I was working full time, like at a regular, you know, and creative job while well, it was creative, but not quite in the way I would like to be creative. And I needed things that I could finish and step away from and not have to step back so much to remember what I was thinking. So this is one of the first ones I did. It's family portrait. And um, this is the daughter. She's actually pregnant. He's the rock and roll boyfriend that the parents don't approve of. What? Wow. So I, I like to tell stories and that's really what I, I use my quilts for. And then so that a, a true story, no. the rock star and the, oh, just a yeah. fun story. Okay. I, I make them all up and maybe some of them have an element of truth, but they're basically, they're, they're fictional. Um, and I just sort of, whatever I'm thinking just comes out. Um, and then I just did, this is like original studio fashionista that I had done. And all the dresses are made from one piece of fabric. Oh, that one is adorable. Oh, thank you. And then. But that's kind of a good size to work with because you don't get overwhelmed. I, well, I tend to do one of two things. I work really big and the biggest quilt I ever made is nine by 10 feet. Holy or I work really small and I have a hard time with anything in the middle. Um, so it, it just like, I I'm doing on uh, eight foot figures now, um, uh, but it's a nice balance because the thought process is a little bit different. And I also like housing and I also use quilting and the things I do to work my way through things I'm thinking about. So at the time I was thinking that my house needed to get a job. Um, and I really you know, had a back, a garage and I thought, well, you know, it'd be fun to do something with a gra garage. There's just a bunch of junk in it. And I wasn't really serious about any of these. I'm just thinking, what are all the things you could do with the garage? And so this is um, Pink Flamingo original music. And in this instance, I used pre-printed fabric uh, for the fashionista. And I just, you know, I just play. I, and I, I don't know what I'm doing exactly, but I like the house shape. So I did another one. I'm thinking, well, you know, that could be like a tea parlor. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah right, in this, right on a little stream with little ducks floating by. Obviously, that didn't happen. And then so, I thought, well, yeah. But, so what, like you just wake up in the morning, you decide I'm going to make a house with a stream and a, or do you like in the middle of the night, you wake up and you'd be like, and you say, oh, that'd be so cute. Or like, how does it come to you? Um, like I have a pile of fabric. Um, so for example, I'm, I'm just starting one. I just was thinking about yesterday. I don't know what it's called. I, sometimes I'll make a little note, a phrase will come to my mind, like I have post-its all over the place. So 
I really, I've been thinking about bookstores because I really like my local bookstore and she actually um, stocks my book and she, I bought a book there on quilt, on quilting um, of the book that I'm in. And I went in and I looked to see if my book was on the shelf. And what did I see on the shelf? I saw this quilt book and I was so thrilled that they bought another copy. They liked it so much. So I, I just been thinking about her and I picked up some new fabric. So I was sitting there thinking, what do I want to do? And I don't always know. And so I had fabric with book titles on it. And I thought that's kind of interesting. And then I had picked up fabric with lots of authors' names. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, there's a handful of writers here whose work has been censored. You know, wouldn't it? Because I, I sometimes like to do social statements. And I thought, you know, maybe... A, book, a, a quilt about reading censored books. I mean, a lot of these are books, you know, Mark Twain's his books have been censored. I mean, books that I've read have been censored. Books that I haven't read have been censored. censored. So I'm picking the authors out who are on the censored list. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to make a little eight by eight inch piece about it, but I don't know what it's going to look like. But I think the fashionista is going to be reading. Well, I'm not sure where that went. I hope I didn't lose it. Um, She's going to be reading Beloved because I had a book title called Beloved and that was, um, oh, it's on the corner over here. So like I have a little corner going with stuff I pick out. So that's the title Beloved. Mm -hmm. the book Beloved. So she'll be reading that. And then I'm just still picking out, I think I lost some of them. I moved it and they, you know, the pieces are small. They float around. If you sneeze, you could possibly inhale them. <laughs> And so this one, I was still thinking about houses and I thought, well, what about like a little studio? I would love a studio in my garage. And then I thought I should be more whimsical because, you know, they all kind of look the same. And I had a lot of cake fabric because I like to cook. So I threw the cakes up in the sky and then I was looking at some words and I went, oh, fashion parade. I kind of like that phrase. And so I had sugar dreams. Sometimes I amaze myself unexpected solution causes fashion parade. So then I needed a fashion parade. And then I remembered I had some fabric with dressed up cats. So I cut them out and I had them run through the studio. So it kind of just comes to you as you're playing. You have kind of a base idea and then it just kind of blossoms from there. But you don't really stress out about it being perfect because whatever it is, it is. Well, I do want it to be perfect, but I generally let the piece speak to me or sometimes I just get a thought or I'll see a word mm -hmm. and then I just take off and sometimes things happen that I'm not thinking about. Um, but the most I start off with on the fashionistas would maybe be a rough sketch if I'm thinking about something in particular. Usually I have a theme um, like this particular one I made after um, same-sex marriage was made legal and I really wanted to do a piece about it. So I have um, what uh, Justice K Kennedy had to say, and then I just quilted the background with love, love, love. And I had been thinking about Keith Haring's hearts because I had seen them in an exhibit in San Francisco and it just sort of all came together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably me with a camera trying to take a picture. <laughs> Well, that that would be true, but I, I don't always I don't always know. Like uh, this one that I'm going to show you, I made this. I don't even remember the theme. It was a themed exhibit, and it had something to do with outer space, which you know it's not like my big topic here. Right, right. But I I like girl groups, and I thought, well, and I had these great guitars, and I was thinking about you know the '60s girl groups like the Ronettes and stuff like that. And so it's called Fashionista Rock. And then I, you know, needed to fill some space. And if I don't know what to do, I put in, I put in a palm tree. And That's then good. I, palm trees in outer space have always like connected in my brain. Oh, well, good. I'm, I'm glad to know that because I just decided palm trees connect with everything. And then I like dogs and I have a thing for chickens. Do I think Dorothy says, this is so fun. Each artist has hers or her own creative process. And as long as the art happens, it's all good. And this one is um, called Word Salad. 
and I don't remember, it was for an exhibit that had a theme, it was an online exhibit, and I love theme exhibits, and I really want to make sure I beat the theme in, so it must have been something about talking mm -hmm. or something, and so it's one long word salad poem, and this was actually the first time I started to think about it and call what I was doing word salad and realize that after I did it, I couldn't just do one. I had to do like a lot more. And so I'll just share the first line with you because um, they're word salad because they don't make a lot of sense all the time. It's Aloha, great American rock music, 60 child groovy dance. And so she's on two phone calls at once. And so, so with the word salad, because I know that's something that you do. Um, if they if this their first time ever hearing about word salad, what what is it? So word salad is just it's words that you put together um, to kind of tell a story. It's got it's kind of like a found poem, um, a found poem. Actually, I'm going to just tell you the definition from my book because it's so much it's so much better than me just sort of going on about it. So um, it's a type of found poem and literary collage. And my words are really kind of my quilts are sort of collagey also because right. I'm cutting out pieces. And so it made sense that the words were kind of um, collagey. And then it's word salad just. It's just stuff that gets thrown in together and, and it's really is word salad. I'm going to just show you what's to the left of me. I, I have words. I pick them up and they're fused and they're, I literally will toss them around until I can find a word I like. And sometimes a word will speak to me. Like I picked up fade out fade ups kind of, if I think it's kind of good, I'll put it to the side and then all of a sudden there'll be a word that goes with it. Um, and I'm going to separate them. I try to break them apart. So I'm, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, just a word will catch, will catch something. And I just, I just don't know what it is. Um, but I just like fade out, but I just literally toss them up and down and I have lots of them. I'm going to actually move them off of here because then they end up on the floor. Sometimes they end up on my socks. Sometimes they end up in the trash by accident. Uh oh. Well, they're very small. You know, you have to hope there's no bad fatalities, but stuff happens. Hopefully, I have another one. Um, so this. Oh, there's still more. Oh, okay. We have more things here. Who knows what those are? They're everywhere once I toss them. So um, this piece, I have had some fabric that said. Uh, Madam Irma on it. That was sort of how this started. And I thought, and then I had fabric that said horoscope. And I thought, well, Madam Irma would be reading your horoscope. Mm -hmm. And then instead of using a regular fashion, I made this for a class uh, sample. I think I also made this for um, a demo I did for Quilting Arts TV. I'd used a pre-printed fashionista. So if I were to teach the class, I don't want people trying to make fashionistas and write word salad because they can't, you know, it's too many different things to do in the course of, you know, the six hours that you have. So I wanted to just do something with her. And plus I liked her. And so I just did horoscope by Madam Irma, Glenn careful online Zen yoga, chow mein diner. And it's just, they just sort of, you know, they're, yeah. silly. they're silly, they're fun, they're playful. They're meant to entertain you. Right. Right. Um, Linda says, how are the quilts attached to the background? Is the background canvas? Um, the background is actually um, mat board, and I use double stick tape. Okay. And it's not archival or anything because it's never meant to come off. They're meant to be framed. Right. So I get too worked up over that. Perfect. Perfect. And Sue says she loves this. Oh, thank you. Um. But the other thing I really like, and I, I want to talk, I can talk about this a little bit before I talk about their dresses, because to me, this is like playing dress up. And, and the, the workshop that I do on this is called um, Paper Dolls for Grown Ups. And it's just like dress up, which is kind of what I do usually when I get dressed up. Although I didn't get overdressed up today because I actually went bike riding earlier with a group of women. So it was like I didn't get around to changing. So this is actually a traditional block quilt called the Ohio star. And I love scrap quilts. And that's primarily what I make when I make a, a regular quilt. 
And I did this with what I call glue stick piecing. It was originally for a class I taught called Not So Mindless Scrap Quilts. And so I felt if people sewed in class, they'd spend all their time sewing and they wouldn't have enough blocks to play and it would be faster to glue stick them, which I'm not 100% sure on that. But I wanted, I wanted people to play with their wildest, busiest fabrics because I love textiles and that's what interests me. And this is why I love scrap quilts because I can take fabric and cut it up and put it back together and it just dances like this was turtles you know it just you just don't know what they're going to do so i just i just love textiles and it has a little piece back so you can see squares of what the fabric was but not big huge pieces mm -hmm. and if they start to come off a little i put a little glue stick on them i can see a few of these could use some glue stick I don't know how permanent it is, but I stitch it down a little bit with a sewing machine so they're at least attached. So if you girls have any questions of Catherine, you could just pop them in the comments and we'll get them answered for you. All right, they're pretty quiet today. I know, and <laughs> well, hopefully people will have some questions. So. These, the ones I want to show you now are all eight inch by eight inch. And I really like this size. I do go to 12 by 12, but you can finish them. And I, I tended to make a lot of these because my, I was decided, I got this idea to write a book. I had so many of them and eight by eight is a good size um, because they don't shrink down too much and you could still see them. And this is genius dog people. Girls Night Out, Mod, Trendsetter, Party Girl, Inventive Fun. And so they've got their martinis, kind of big, but, you know, you need them. They've got a guide. I gave them a guidebook so they know where they were going. And they're putting on lipstick and nail polish. Uh, what does she have? Yeah, she has nail polish. And they've got, they some of them have hats. And then their dresses are made from one piece of fabric. So this dress was a turtle. This was a laurel birch fabric, and this was some from really nice shirt fabric, which I only bought a yard of, so it was never going to become a shirt. And I just let the fabric kind of make it look like it's pieced together. And this is a pretty new one. And this is kind of fun because I had measuring uh, tape fabric so people can see how big it is. And um, I like the idea of, I love this, I, I just short arm was interesting to me because I just got a new sewing machine and the big thing about it was, is it had, you know, a lot more space, but it's still a short arm quilt. And, you know, the difference between thinking about the differences between long and short arm quilting. And so I didn't want to piece all this together. And I got decided to go with an orange theme because I found this fabric, which was printed, some printed fabric. I'm going to move this closer because you can see it bigger. So this is some printed sure. fabric I bought. Okay. And I got to remember it's in reverse. Somebody had hand printed it. And then um, over here, oh, this, this is not piece. This is some really great also printed fabric that I thought I could cut out and make it look like a quilt. And then I had a sewing machine and I had some thread. And then I thought, well, if I've got an orange theme going, we could have or an orange crush because that actually came off some fabric that um, was soda cans. Mm -hmm. And she's got a rotary cutter and she's got all her pieces strung together and she's holding soda pop, which is also orange. And so I, and I get the yellow um, on her and then the cat's orange. Uh -huh. I can get really themey. Super cute. Diana says some of the ones you held up were really stiff looking. What kind of material do you use? Um, that's a really good question. And they're supposed to be stiff. Um, I use I, I use regular cottons for the uh, back and for the front. Um, very rarely on these do I use anything else. I just I like the light cotton. And then I instead of batting, I use felt to keep it a little bit flatter. And it's also like usually a little stiffer than a batting. And then I use a medium weight Pellon to keep it from flopping because mm -hmm. I'm thinking of them as wall work, not something to sleep under. And I really, when I sell my work, I want to really 
focus on the, its art and take away the, oh, it's such a nice quilt. My grandmother made a quilt. I bet I could make that. How did you make it? It's, and how long, and I, the question that I'm sure all of us love is how long did it take you? And it's not how long did it take us to actually make it, it's how many years and how long did it take us to learn the skill set to put it together right. so it looks really good. And it's, you don't just turn around and grab some fabric and go, hey, I'm going to make a, you know, a big quilt today and it's going to be perfect. It, you know, there, there's a lot of skills that we've picked up over the years. Right. For sure. For sure. So I'm going to just, this is actually the cover of my book, which just came out the end of um, last year. Um, I was pretty excited about that. Well, everybody needed a pandemic project, right? For sure. Yes. Yep, I, busy. Now, I kept making quilts. And then I thought, well, I have so many of them, I should do something. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of nice to have a book. And I kind of, and of course, you know, I don't know that much about putting a book together. I, I did a book about 30 years ago, um, but a lot has changed. But I thought, well, you know, I, I'm sure I could figure that out. It, um, and it, it did take um, a bit of work, but I, I kind of had a vision. Uh, but I am going to say I did hire an, uh, a book designer, which was really helpful to kind of clean me up and, uh, figure out the things I wouldn't know about. Right. So this is um, another piece. We have a couple travel themes. I like themes. So I started this one out. Um, I had bicycle fabric. Oh, you can't see that. And if I'm not holding it up high enough, just tell me. So I'll move this closer so everybody can see this a little okay. bit. I would tell you, um, sometimes like you go to the, whatever, whichever direction you think you should go, go the opposite direction. I know it, and I'm having the hardest time with no. that. I don't have that trouble. I do Zoom yoga. Yes. And, she doesn't, and even in my yoga class, she doesn't like to do the same direction. She always does opposites, and my brain does not translate that. Right. And it drives me crazy. So this is uh, Madeline in Paris, and I made her because I had this bicycle fabric, and I want to use all my fabric at least once. And so I'm gonna, I am thought I'll do something with a bicycle. And then I had bought some Eiffel Tower fabric, and I hadn't really used that. And I thought, well, I should use that. And I thought, well, she could be in Paris riding her bike. And then I wanted to use this fabric. Um, this is, I think this might be African themed fabric. So I wanted to use that for her dress. And then I found a basket for her bicycle. And then if you're in Paris, you're going to have to have, this is burgundy and butter. And um, of course, dog food, because the dog is over here. And I gave the dog a bow. And then I had to fill the space in. So I put in three little trees and then she has some flowers and she's eating a mad line. Um, I put a flower in her hair. And then sometimes I'll use pictures in the middle of the word salad. So we have a uh, petite chocolate cake. So instead of saying cake, I put in a slice of cake. Well, it's actually chocolate pastry. So I put the pastry there and then I have brie with a piece of cheese. Um, I didn't put in a cup of latte. And then I just found, I get a lot of my words from the selvage of the fabric. So right. Madeline came off the selvage, if anybody's familiar with that, as did we, we. And then French also came off French laundry fabric. And it just kind of comes together. And then I have a lot of shoes. The shoes actually came off of a very, very old Eleanor Burns fabric. Mm -hmm. No, not Eleanor Peace Bailey fabric. Okay. So a lot of times these figurative fabrics I just cut them apart and, right. you know, decapitate them and, you know, whatever else I need to do. So really it's kind of a good lesson for everybody that they need to be collectors of stuff. Cause you never, you have to have a little bit of a variety of stuff to be able to create something like a collage. Yeah. I, I buy a lot of quarter yard pieces. Um, because if I bought a yard of everything I liked, well, that would be a lot of fabric. Yes. And I also don't like to repeat a lot. So, you know, sometimes you finish it up and you use it up, but it means you can go back to the fabric store and go buy more, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of stuff, you know, you use it a couple of, you know, a handful of times and you get tired of it. I, you know, I actually, I'm going to go through my fabric collection and I think some of the stuff that I haven't touched and I look at and I just, it doesn't speak to me anymore. But, right. you know, it's time to time to move on and, and freshen up. And there's always something new and exciting, you know, when you go, go to the store. Right. It, um, Rosie says, are the legs and arms drawn in or stitched? 
um, they're stitched in. Um, and I'm just using, because these are small, I'm just using my regular thread that I, I would normally piece or quilt with. Uh, people ask what I use. I happen to like Mettler, but that's just me. And I like stuff that I can buy rather than mail order because I don't know what I'm doing until I'm there. And then to ha I have to order it. And then if I can't touch it or feel it or see it, I'm never happy. Um, but, you know, whatever your regular thread fabric is, um, uh, thread is, I use for that and I don't draw them first. So everything is done freehand. So, you know, I look at it this way. You can draw with your pen and we've all sewn enough that we can draw with our sewing machine. Most of us can write our name with our sewing machine in cursive. My cursive on a sewing machine is better than my handwriting. Right. And if you can't do that, you need to just go practice, get some, get some scrap fabric and practice. Cause if you can free motion, it's very, well, it's very freeing. Just trust us, girls. You'll love it. Now, yeah, free motion is lots of fun. It opens up a whole new world. Right. So this is Route 66 Landscape. And I started this because I had a lot of Volkswagen van fabric, which I had to use. And so I picked orange for some reason. And then I, I put a cat in the driver's seat. And it just so happens that my mother had a Volkswagen um, van um only hers had, so it makes me think of hers, and hers had um, leopard seats in it. And then, oh yeah, my hands are going the wrong way. But anyway, so I, I had her dress match it. You might remember her dress from the piece where we were uh, had a, a quilt going through the sewing machine. That's the same fabric. And since she's in the desert, I gave her sensible shoes. And I put some cactus in there, and then she's holding some cherries. And then I like to stack so, you know, you've got the Volkswagen van there and you've got all this open space. So I had suitcase fabric. So I thought, well, she put her suitcase on the van and then the dog wanted to sit on the suitcase and then a bird landed on the dog and she's holding a map and she's at the rest area because she's lost. And then there's just a bird, you know, I put in a bird and then I thought a peace sign kind of went with the Volkswagen van. And then the word salad with it is Route 66 Cactus Landscape. Kick back, free spirit, road thrill dreams, New York West to California, sunshine wonder, where are we? Rest area. So you just, and I don't know, you know, the stuff just sort of falls together for me. I had license plate fabrics and I picked New York to California um, because I moved here from New York to California. Although interestingly enough, it was not in the orange van. It was in a half ton GMC pickup truck. I drove back to New York with my mother the longest way possible up through Canada uh, and the Trans Canada Highway dropping down in uh, near Detroit, Michigan before we landed in New York. So it just made me think about lots of things, but just sort of strewn in there. Yeah. Kathleen says, uh, buying whatever fabric she likes is how she ended up with a whole room full. Um, well, and I'm just going to give you a little secret about Kathleen. I don't think she buys quarter yards ever. So that could be what's added up so quickly. And um, Diane, but we're very thankful for that, Kathleen. Um, and Diana says, have you thought of having your designs made into fabric? You know, people ask me that all the time. And I haven't really thought about it because they're made out of fabric. And I think unless someone approached me and had a plan of how I could do that, I don't want to do it. All I've done is the book and then I've made reading cards from the quilts. And my real interest is in cutting up fabric. So I don't dye my fabric. Um, I don't design fabric. You know, like if I can't find something I want, if I'm looking like for a loaf of bread and I can't find a loaf of bread, I don't draw loaves of bread and then go to spoon flour and have them printed. It's that's not where my interest is. My interest is working with the limitations of commercial fabric because I love it. I mean, I just love all those motifs on the fabric. I love everything people do. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's inspiring for me. Like the last thing. Okay. This is really special. Guinea pigs. It's Japanese fabrics. I bought this at road to California. I mean, I would never have thought of guinea pig fabric. Right. Who would think there'd be a market for guinea pig fabric? But look at how how popular the sloth fabric was. 
I mean, it's ridiculous. The first time I see something like that, I think, oh, that's nobody's ever going to buy it. And then it goes crazy. Yeah. And I mean, and I had a guinea pig as a kid and I just, and I love guinea pigs. They're really sweet. And so I had to buy the guinea pig fabric. I only bought a quarter yard because that's a lot of guinea pigs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but especially when you're only using a couple of them on a, on a piece. Right. And be, right. Well, I, a lot of guinea pig quilts. Mm-hmm. And um, so sometimes I do a little romance because I, I love rom-coms. And I'm going to say during the pandemic, I watched everything on Netflix. Good, bad, average, terrible, should have never been filmed. <laughs> um, but I just love them. And so this um, is called Cowboy Jack and Geeky Chic Lulu. And you might recognize their names from some fabric salvages. And I don't know how I started this out, what I was thinking about, um, but I had some bug fabric. And so it's um, discover serpentipity over botanical love bug digital crush at weird garden eatery. Oh my God, what a notion, golden dandelions. And so her dress is made from one piece of fabric. And then I drew in um, the leaves on the plants and he has... Um, Oh, he has elderberry wine for lunch with for her. So they're going to have a little drink and he's going to play his music. And sometimes if the pieces are too big, like this vest was like twice as big, I trim them down to make them fit. And she has some very sensible little sneakers on. And then at the end of 2019, I was thinking about 2020. So this was for... New Year's 2020. And when I don't have words, and that's very rare, I only let myself put them together if it's a word that's just impossible to find. So I use typewriter key fabric to call this New Year's Wishes 2020. Um, and we all know how that turned out. Um, and so this has all sorts of references um, to different romance movies. So it's my steady, dapper, darling, easy to love you, blend cherry pie and fresh squeezed lemon Coca-Cola, best friend, romance, and passion for happiest life. And, oh, that's supposed to be Petunia. I have, she's a little miniature dachshund. Took me a long time to really bond with her. So I had to put her in all my quilts so that I, you know, we had to bond. I mean, it's like I wasn't going to give her up, even though I might threaten it. Yeah, um, I'm one of those. Yeah, well, she... She shredded two quilts that were in mint condition in her early days. And on the last mm. one I told her, I was rehoming her. It was like in two seconds, I would to confetti. Oh. I was so mad. And she I think she knew it because she only chews her own blankets. And this is what they look like. It's, because we're just standing here and I'm not doing this. OMG, that's horrible. That's her blanket. That is crazy. She had anxiety from her childhood. She was a rescue. And I, dachshunds need an enormous amount of attention. Yes. And I think she just didn't have enough. And that's how she managed her stress. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we've worked it out. We're best of buddies. So the romance movies references in here. I don't know if anybody's watched Murphy's Romance. No. Okay. Got you girls. Not me. Well, okay, it had James Garner and Sally Field. I think it must be from like the 80s or 90s. I've already watched it maybe 30, okay, maybe more. I don't know how many times. I just, there's something about that that spoke to me. I just love James Garner. And so he was um, a, a pharmacist and he, had, and he was, it was actually filmed in Arizona and he was a pharmacist in a small town in the West uh, in an old fashioned drugstore with a lunch counter. And Sally Field comes to town with her daughter. She was a little too woe is me for a contemporary woman. I'm just saying that. But you got to take into account the time period. So, anyway, she came in and she ordered a lemon Coke. And so he squeezes the lemon juice into the lemon Coke. So that's the reference over there. And then the cherry pie reference is a reference to a friend of mine um, where we talked about. Um, going to visit all the old fashioned drugstore and, and restaurants. And she would be looking for cherry pie and I would be looking for lemon Coke. But, you know, just get these little silly things that, you know, kind of happen. Yeah. 
And then um, I just um, had a quilt accepted into a Sakwa show. I don't know if everybody knows what Sakwa is. Probably not. So tell us the definition. So Sakwa is Studio Art Quilts Associates. And they do a lot of promotion of art quilts. And they have a number of jury shows every year. And this particular show the was a theme that I could work with. Some of them are a little esoteric for me. And I have to leave them alone. But this was gastronomy, which I'm like, this is perfect for me. I love to cook and I love food. So perfect. And I wanted to... I didn't really want to make a whole brand new piece. And I realized that I already had two food themed pieces and the minimum size was 24 by 24. So I've started um, taking these and putting them on 24 by 24 inch backgrounds, uh -huh. um, sort of like a four frame comic of related themes. And I'm actually finding that all of them have been accepted in exhibits. So it's like, wow. Who knew, you know, instead of making one bigger piece, if I want to show my word salad off, I, I can just continue what I'm doing and just kind of put them together collectively. So I had a piece, the first piece, because I was thinking about what food is. Um, this is called um, Hello, My Retired Old Friend Violet, Hippie Zen Organic Dirt Garden Poet. And I started this one. I was thinking about a friend of mine from sixth grade who... I'm Facebook's friends with, we've never spoken. We've had a couple, you know, text ex exchanges. And if I ever go through Vermont, I should go say hello. But she farms. This is a nice suburban girl who went off to school in Colorado and now is a farmer. So she raises sheep and, ch I think, and chickens. And she had a white dog that looked like this. And I was thinking about her when I did this. You know, and she's still got, you know, really long hair and, you know, she, she's out there sticking her hands in there, pulling out the sheep at four in the morning when it's freezing, when they're having a hard time delivering. Uh -huh. So I was thinking about her. And so I kind of gave her like a little tie dye dress and I put a phone in there just because, you know, it's like we're having a phone call. And then I have a sheep and um, a rooster and then the dog and sunflowers and she's got some apples and then I threw a hat on her and then the hat looked like it needed a flower. So I put a flower on the hat. And so that was the first part of food. So we're talking about raising food. And then I thought, well, you know, you got to buy the food and I like farmer's markets. So I ought to do a quilt about the farmer's market. So I had um, some fabric that had um the thing that said farmer's market on it welcome i mean isn't that wonderful i didn't even have to do anything yeah i found her a nice little dress and then she had a shopping bag and i put all the fruits and vegetables in there and they're all cut out individually and then i found a little mexican hat that i liked that looked like what you'd wear to the farmer's market and then i put a chicken on it and the ch and i found an egg so i the chicken just laid an egg on her head <laughs> And she's eating a strawberry. And then I decided to give her a bun because, you know, you got to change up the hairstyles every so often. And then I thought, well, there's I had apples. So I put the apples in the basket. And then I found something that said apples and I made a sign. And then I put produce in this basket. And then there's um, beets in there, eggplant, carrots, tomato, I think. And then this one. I found corn. I think the corn might have been in the basket. I'm not sure. But anyway, the corn went in the basket. And um, I think what's on the bottom must have been attached to it. And then these baskets I got lucky. I think, yeah, these baskets actually already had their fruit in them. Wasn't I lucky? And then a lot of times, like, I'll add a shelf or something to put stuff on. Mm -hmm. I just gave, put a shelf in there for the food. And that's, and of course she's wearing her high heeled shoes. And then we got little baby chickens running all around. Cute. There you go. Cute. And and over, that would help me more. I, you know what? It's crazy. Every day I struggle with whether I go to the right or the left and I always go the wrong way. It's like, it's like always opposite the way you think you should go. Um, okay. So uh, Marosi says, do you leave the edges raw or do you finish them? Um, I actually finished them. Um, if you look at this, because you can kind of see it on here, I think I use a blanket stitch. 
But around the um, around the appliques. Oh, around the appliques. Yes, it's all raw edge applique. It's all fused. Okay. And so I don't really care. Sometimes the threads are sticking up. Yeah. I guess, you know, it's fabric. Do you have a favorite fusible? Because every artist and every designer has a different favorite everything. Well, I'll tell you. I am more about design than figuring out the best fusible. And so I use Wonder Under 805 because Laura Wasilinski uses it and she is a really good fuser. And I am sure there are other, fuse, other fusibles that work just as well. But I figured if it was good enough for her, it's good enough for me. And I don't, you know, and, and my, when I teach classes, I don't give written instructions on how to do fusing. I send everybody to her website because anything I would write would never be as good. Right. And, 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 and she, I figure I might as well send them there. Cause that's, I learned everything I know from her on, online. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And so in your book, um, your book is available on your website, which is scrolling across the bottom and they can, they can order your book there. And in your book, that would give them step-by-step -step directions on how to, to start, kind of this creative process if their brains don't just naturally work that way? Um, not really, because it's not a how-to book. As it's really like a picture book. <laughs> uh, sorry, shh, 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 Petunia. Shh, not, uh, shh. Okay, I'm going to pick her up for a second. Oh, that's fine. I have to pick up my dog a lot when I'm doing lives. Okay, so Petunia, you can stand right here for just a minute and say hello to everybody. And they can take turn around and decide that you're the cutest thing ever, no matter how loud you are. And then you need to be quiet. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that your book is more of a picture book for inspiration. It's for inspiration and amusement and fun. Um, yeah, I didn't want to do a how-to book because I don't do patterns. I like everybody. It's, I, I teach, I'm very free form and I'm, when I teach, I'm all about creativity. And if I had patterns in there, everybody's going to be just making cookie cutter pieces. And I want people to look at fabric differently. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't, uh, do that. And I think there was another part to that. Oh, and I was going to mention, if anybody wants to order the book, um, there is a free shipping code. Um, just type in Fabric Chicks, and the shipping's free if you you know decide you need a book or cards. Okay, perfect. Is that is that one word or two words? It, it's one word. Okay, perfect. All right, girls, did you hear? She gave you a code for free shipping. So just type in Fabric Chicks. Super exciting. So what what cards are you talking about? So I took um, t and, uh, 12 of the fashionistas, um, including this one, and I made them into um, four by four inch greeting cards. Super so, fun. So and I know that a lot of people don't write cards anymore, but we should change that because people love to get cards in the mail. I, I love cards and I, I love greeting cards. So I figure, well, I just... I'm kind of at a point in my life that I've decided I only do what I want to do and what I like. And I don't worry about the rest of it, you know, before you, you know, I spend so much time worrying about it and I've just decided, well, you know, if people like them, they'll buy them. And if they don't like them, they won't buy them, but I like them. And oddly enough, I probably sell almost as much reading cards as I do books. Uh huh. Yeah. Which, which is kind of funny because the bookstore that has my book is I have to go back and give her more greeting cards. <laughs> it's she's not selling as many books because I think it's hard to find a book in the store um, because people don't know what they're looking for, but the greeting cards are out there. And yeah, it's kind of, kind of, it was kind of interesting to me to, to see that, but there are, you can see a couple pictures of the inside of the book on my website and I can just flip open so you can kind of get a sense of what it's like. It, it's full color. And it's a lot of the, some of the pieces you've seen, not all of them. And then I talk about what word salad is and what fashionistas are. And I talk about, you know, just a little bit about what inspires me. Like I um, wrote a little bit about my grandmothers because they kind of, you know, I think about them when I think about this. Um, but it's, it's, and you know, it's, it's just basically, it's the quilts. It's, it's like a storybook. It's a picture book for grownups. Right. Mm -hmm. The quilt on the cover, which I, I actually don't have, it's on exhibit. Um, somebody said, well, isn't it a little bit racy for quilters? 
And this is the cover. She's standing on a typewriter. And she's standing on the typewriter because I bought typewriter fabric, which was kind of big. Yeah. And then we decided she could stand on the typewriter and she could read a book. And the line that people weren't sure about, and I said, well, I don't want to, you know, hide her in the book because people might as well know what they're buying. And if they're offended, they won't buy it. But it's um, Wild Women and Straight Well Hung Single Men Birthday Snippet of a Mysterious, Fairly Blood Curdling Three Time Lotto Baby Forever Feel Their Lust. Oh. So it's, it's well, like, and I'm with you. If they're going to be offended, then go buy something else. Exactly. And I figure I might as well put it on the cover because I'd hate to have somebody buy the book and think it was didn't wasn't filled with lots of missed messages and lots of fun. It's a book for grownups. Right, right. Well, we just say we have cat fabric and dog fabric, and it says weird things like the Chihuahua got the bulldog pregnant kind of thing. And it, it has all weird, like, but it's hilarious. You like read it and you're like, oh my gosh, whoever sat around thinking these things up, it, you guys have different brains than some of us. I mean, all I know is when I think these things up, it just happens. I just, all of a sudden I pick up a word and then I put the other word together and it's like, oh, it's like playing Wordle, except it's not Wordle. It's the same concept right. that I'm looking for Wordle in a way. It's like filling in the pieces. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I end up with a story that I didn't know I was telling. Yeah. I, I, I can't explain it. Um, and, and this one, um, this one's kind of fun um, because, you know, like I said, I love to bake and I got a big position. That one's adorable. Pardon? That one's adorable. Thank what? you. And this is um, Soho Cupcakery Artisan Baked Treats. And I made one that did not turn out right um, because I quilted it, but drew the people in with the wrong color thread. I don't know what I was thinking. And I could not, it took me a while to find, I love cupcakery and I could not find that piece of, it was on a salvage and I could never figure out where it came from. But then about eight months later, I found fabric that said cupcakery and I was ready to go. And I do have a stove kind of like this. I have a big, huge old, like 42 inch, white old fashioned stove and then her dress is one piece of fabric and then I found the apron was actually an apron on some pre-printed fabric and then because I love to bake I kind of had a recipe in here um because I have a I think I bought every cooking fabric there is with words uh -huh. and so I had a flour sifter and baking powder and it's sort of like a recipe for um chocolate cupcakes and I had a mixer which I hadn't used and I had to make the table um, and I had, you know, I had cupcake pans. So it just seemed like perfect. And the dog is playing with his bone. And I threw some stuff on this stove. And then I had to put the salt pepper shakers on the stove because I have a lot of salt and pepper shaker fabric. It's a quarter of a yard. But you know how many salt and pepper shakers are on a quarter of a yard? Thousands. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's a lot of salt and pepper shakers. Yeah. Um, and I only have... Okay, I think I have a couple. I have tried to avoid collecting the salt and pepper shakers. I thought my brother-in-law was going to get started with that for me. And I kind of squashed that idea really quickly. You know, because yeah. they got a little crazy with the chickens for a while. You know, they oh, kept telling me, you, say that you like something, all of a sudden you get zillions of them. I know. I mean, I have, I'm selective in my chickens. I know what I like. And then right. all of a sudden it's like, I'm looking and they're going, you have a lot of chickens. And I'm like, yeah, because those came from you and those came from you and those came from you. Like you're half the chicken collection. Right. Right. Like guys, stop. No chickens. So now they limit themselves to posting chicken pictures on Facebook when they're out, if they see a chicken. Uh-huh. And then um, I finished the piece off and the piece is called um, Food is Life, Food is Love. And when I think about food, I think about people cooking together and eating together and the social aspect and the nurturing aspect and the connection that people have. So I wanted to cover like four different areas. And um, so I just made a couple cooking dinner and it's called We Love Sunday Supper cooking tradition and he's holding some pasta they've got some tomato sauce on the stove and a dutch oven 
and the dog is sitting on the dog food. And um, in case you're wondering about her cute little shoes and stockings, mm -hmm. that came off a piece of fabric somebody gave me that had dressed up cats. And so I trimmed down the legs and the shoes a little bit. And there she was. She got had textured stockings. Super cute. And who would think to use the shoes on the cat? Well, they were really good shoes. Mm -hmm. So Ann, uh, Lynn says she's looking at your website and the card set says to pick the one she wants and put them in the notes section. She's not where, sure where to pick from. Oh, so there, you'll see pictures of 12 greeting cards. So when you see the individual cards, just look at the individual cards and decide which ones you like. Okay. Does and then Kathleen says, oh my gosh, that uh, that's exactly how she got her dog. Her, the mom is a bulldog and the dad is a chihuahua. I was just making it up, Kathleen. I don't really know what, it does say something about a chihuahua and another animal, but I, now I have to go look and make sure it was a bulldog because now you're going to want that fabric. And Dorothy says, we aren't old lady prude quilters. We are creatives. Her current audiobook is the Dirty Book Club. Well, that kind of shocks me about you, Dorothy. I learn something new every day about you girls. And um, Rosie says that she actually did want to know about the outside edge, not the applique. But she okay. said, yeah, 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 yeah. But did I answer the outside edge question? For she her. She, I think so. Um, with the buttonhole stitch. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have, go ahead and show us more. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Oh no. I, I showed you everything I pulled out. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any more questions or anything I could answer or tell you about. And you were just published in a uh, Sakwa magazine, weren't you? It was the Sakwa book. Um, I forget what they called it. I think it's Exploring Art Quilts. Okay. They did, um, they did a four page article on me. They had done one in their magazine. And it was just one of those things that just happened. I didn't have to do anything for it. I got an email that they wanted to interview me. And I'm like, really? I mean, basically, you write a lot of it. You have to tell, you know, they ask you a million questions and you go back and forth. But yeah, so that was pretty exciting. Mm hmm. And Leslie says, how do you find shows for your work? That is a really um, a good question um, for any of you who enter shows, whether they're, you know, you're doing art quilts or bed quilts or, you know, traditional quilts. Um, I find a lot of them listed on the Sakwa website. Um, there's something else. I can't remember what it's called that I get stuff from. Um, somebody else. Oh, I can't remember her name. This is this terrible? She's a quilter. Um, oh, Lyric. I think it's Lyric Montgomery. I don't think I'm missing something in her name. She sends them out in her newsletter. She usually has a list of them that go out once a month. Um, but I selectively pick them. I mean, they used to be less expensive to enter, and now they're like up to like $45, you know, Right. It gets expensive. It gets expensive. Yeah. And the funny thing is, like, I stopped entering the really big shows. Like, I don't enter um, some of the big art quilt shows. I, you know, like at Vision San Diego, uh, they're never going to pick my stuff. I go in and I look at the exhibits and I'm like, okay, I know why I didn't get accepted. So um, a lot of those big art quilt things I you know I don't do quilt national I don't do I don't think quilt national will ever take me I, I would have to I've sent them my best and I don't get in and I'm thinking I would I might do it one more time but it gets old so um I look for places that just sort of sound interesting or themes that sound good like I just sent uh they took two pieces it was a uh they just went off to um, an art center in Indianapolis and the theme was modern craft and I thought well that's really good I like that theme because I don't want to make pieces specifically for an exhibit because I end up with them. Right. And I entered it because I thought, you know, I do like to get a little more exposure. And it's also nice to say that I'm exhibiting because people do sometimes care about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think of my, I don't think of my work as fine art. I think of my work as modern craft, really, um, because I feel it's 
it's like craft. It's not 100% perfect. I'm using right. kind of like found materials. It's not painterly. And most of the exhibits, the really big exhibits, the quilts are very tend to be very painterly, um, either with a lot of painted or dyed fabric or a lot of um, uh, uh, thread drawing and a lot of photo real people and things that are very structured. And my stuff is very unstructured. Like all these people, I just cut them out. I didn't draw anything. I just go cut his pants. I go cut her dress. I just draw his hair in on the first round. Right. And if it goes wrong, then I got to figure out a really good story to go with it. <laughs> yeah, like I have something. I don't have it with me right now. Um, her lips are askew, and it was called um, Hot Flash Birthday Concerns. And so she's holding a margarita. She's holding a fan. She has a fan on her lay, um, on her head, and the lips got screwed up. And you can't take them out; they're too tightly, and you'll ruin the whole. You'll ruin everything. Right. right. And so I think I put a little bit of paint on them, a little fabric paint, and did a few other things. And I just said she's having a hot flash, and she's had a little too much to drink. That's Perfect. it. Yeah. And Her Botox gone wrong. Yeah. You just you got you've got to figure out a story. But I mean. So I like I don't enter Houston generally and a lot of the quilt shows I don't really fit into the category. So you know I've been done done a lot with um Sakwa. They seem to be the most diverse in terms of what they accept when I look at their exhibits. It, it's just such a big variety of technique and um approach. Right. Um, you know, and I've I've like, yeah, I've had a couple like they were they've taken I mean, regional shows are good. They're easier to get into. Right. Well, and I do think that the quilting world has come a long, long way in accepting art quilts. Um, but, I mean, for a long time, you art quilts were, like, forbidden. So, so it's baby steps, like anything. It kind of takes people out of their comfort zone. Well, and art quilts have changed a lot. Like, when I first started doing art quilts, the first, the first art quilt I did was nine by 10 feet. <laughs> I know it was like 1997 and I just, it kept growing and I entered it in Houston and I got in and I won an award of merit and it was a very different, it was very different. Uh -huh. um, the, the, the quilts were more tied into craft then and People didn't have long on arm sewing machines. They weren't painting everything. They weren't doing all that heavy, heavy quilting. They weren't taking and uh, photo transferring a picture they made to fabric and then painting it and then going in and quilting it and maybe adding some, you know, piece of fabric to it. So right. I think techniques have changed a lot and I just do what I like to do. I don't, I don't want to paint my fabric. I don't want to take a photograph and transfer it to fabric. Um, that's not my interest in fabric. I just like looking at a piece of fabric like the guinea pigs and thinking, what can those guinea pigs do? Right, right. So now we have people on that are from all over the country. And if they were interested in having you teach, you you teach at guilds and you can do, if they have a group of enough friends, they could hire you to teach a Zoom class or anything like that? Um, I do teach and lecture on Zoom and I do travel. Um, so I can do both. I only teach one class on Zoom, and that's um, Fashionista's Paper Dolls for Grown Ups. Uh, and I will toss in a little bit of word salad if you like, but I generally don't like to do an, uh, an all word salad class on Zoom because I need to be able to see more clearly what you're doing and toss your salad around for help you toss your salad a little bit. Right, right. And you can see on my Facebook page um, some of the things uh, my students have made in class to get an idea of what you can do. But people people finish their projects because they're small. They're usually not more than 12 to 14 inches, you know, in any direction. And people typically don't do a lot of sewing in class because they're too busy playing and uh -huh. trying things out. But unless you don't want to finish it before class, everybody is fused and ready to sew. So you don't end up with a UFO. Right. Well, um, and then Rondi says she thinks that her guild was the first zoom class you did. It was so much fun. It took her out of her comfort zone. 
Which I um, could totally see. I could totally see, Rondi, that that would um, not be a traditional pieced quilt. It would take you out of your comfort zone. I can't remember what guild you're, you were in, but your name is very familiar to me. And I think you sent me a picture of your finished piece. She lives in um, Livermore area. So one okay. of the guilds down there, yeah. Yeah, I have a good time teaching the class online. It's really fun to see what people do and um, and, and, and to you yeah. know, tell, show someone how to do something without actually physically standing there is interesting. Well, it, it is a very new way of teaching that we kind of had, we're forced to learn with COVID. Um, it, and it's very tricky. It has a lot of different challenges. Yeah, and I use two cameras. Um, when I teach in the lighting is generally a little bit better than this, but for what I was doing, this was the better place to stand. And um, I thought I had bath lighting, but then it was creating reflections. But um, no, I have the um, a camera, like, like I'll demonstrate how I sew and how I do the hair. And so I have a camera right at my needle at the sewing machine so everybody can see exactly how I'm doing it. Right. And Sue says it def it's definitely going to start um, looking at fabric a whole different way. Oh, good. Yes. Yep. All right, girls. Do you have any other questions for Catherine? Can Catherine, can you think of anything else we want to show them or tell them? I, I can't think of anything um, unless somebody has another question. Nope. They're pretty quiet today. All right. All right. So we will, um, we'll work at something, try to get some kind of a zoom with you because I think that the ladies would love to take a class. How long do your classes usually go? Um, for a zoom class, I do it in two sessions. So the first session is an hour and we go over all the fabric and materials so that when we actually meet for class, you have what you need. You're not going through your fabric collection, looking for it or wishing that you had gone to the store and bought something that you didn't have or gone to your friend's house and got something. Um, so people have had a chance to really think about fabric. And then the class is um, four hours and generally people rarely sew on the Zoom classes. Okay, so it's but just I'm creating their collage. Right. Yeah. Because they're really designed for you to be ready to sew. And then we'll talk about how to sew them. And I'll talk about like, oh, this is, I call this wallpaper, like the decorative stitch that goes down the back of the quilt. Yeah. And there, and there's an, um, I think the, there's an eight page full, co um, full color handout that I will send you um, in advance of the class with pictures in it so that you have something to reference and, you know, a little bit of a sense of patterning. Um, so that, you know, for people that really aren't going to be comfortable, <laughs> right, right, you know, just cutting. There's something we'll talk about how to have guidelines, and I'll show you how to do like a this for auditioning fabric. So it's it's you get you, there, there's a lot that goes on in the class. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, ladies. Um, thank you for joining us. They're all writing and thank you right now. Um. Beverly Ann says it looks like a fun project to try. And Leslie says you put fun into fabric. Um, so girls, go go uh, look at your stash in a whole new way. And um, we'll put together some kind of a fun Zoom class soon. We should have, if I was on top of it, we would plan it before. So then we could have interview you and then have them all sign up. But uh, one of these days we'll get ahead of ourselves. All yeah. right. Thank you, ladies. And thank you, Catherine, so much for joining us. And thank you so much for inviting me and, and thank everybody. Thank you to everybody who joined today. Um, I had a really good time sharing my work with you and I hope you enjoyed it as well. They did. They're, they, they're still typing in so much fun. Thank you. And Leslie says, Zoom, yes. So we'll work on that, Leslie. All right, girls, have a good weekend. Uh, well, a good week because we I won't we won't be having a Saturday a Wednesday sale because we have we'll be in Sacramento at the show. So we'll see you um, on Wild Wednesday lives to give you a behind the scenes of the.